So today we're going to talk about vitamin C. There are very few ingredients that are coveted by skincare professionals and skincare enthusiasts alike, and that's definitely a vitamin C. Now, there's so many different vitamin C derivatives on the market, and today we're going to cover L-ascorbic acid, the active form of vitamin C, a gold standard for many dermatologists that love its multitasking benefits, from being a collagen cofactor to its firming and brightening benefits that any skin type and skin condition can benefit from and enjoy. So the vitamin C became a staple in any, you know, brightening and anti-aging skincare regimen. Um, we wanted to make sure that for clinical skin, I developed the most comprehensive and the most advanced vitamin C serum out there. That means that I wanted to formulate it with L-ascorbic acid, the derivative of vitamin C, uh, which is called active by skincare professionals and Rutgers University. There's a lot of derivatives of vitamin C. Unfortunately, not all of them are stable, and some of them uh, require a special pH level in order to be uh, stable and active um, ingredient. With that in mind, I have vetted approximately 17 R&D labs who I wanted to entrust the development of vitamin C serum for clinical skin. Out of the 17 R&D teams, domestic R&D teams, I landed on only four who received the brief in order to uh, come up with the prototype. It's always interesting to see how different chemists and experts uh, interpret the brief that I submit to them. So unfortunately, not every single R&D and control manufacturer has the know-how how to manufacture vitamin C serum with L-ascorbic acid. Some of them rejected me because they only felt comfortable working with tetrahexadecyl ascorbate or that MAP version of vitamin C. Only four met the criteria of GMP and being able to stabilize L-ascorbic acid in a formula. Um, it's interesting to see how a year later, when I'm looking at my prototypes that I received here from different manufacturers, how the formula look like. So let me just show you what we are looking at. All right, so no particular order. Let's look at this one. What does it say? Avelina vitamin C serum prototype dated April 2021. So it's hardly a year old. And let's look how brown this vitamin C serum became. All right, so definitely oxidized. Same brief, but the product has like a gel-like consistency and some kind of like crystals inside of the syringe. Definitely not something that I want my clinical skin customers to be putting on their skin. Another reject. Okay, let's look at this guy. Again, same brief, but I'm getting like a gel-like consistency. In fact, this product from this contract manufacturer, not disclosing the names, changed the color. We're looking at soy sauce, <laughs> kind of a coloring. Another contract manufacturer, you know, they did a good job interpreting it. The formula still seems to be stable and light in color. That's what I want to see in my vitamin C serum. Uh, another guy, as you can see, super brown. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And I think the winner, which I finally marked here, so I know this is the good guy. Uh, as you can see, it says vitamin C serum dated November 2021. So the formula is almost a year old. Let's see what it looks like now. Yes, that's the vitamin C that you guys are getting from clinical skin. And that was the prototype that has been approved. It has a little heart shape, meaning that I love that one. It's been approved and actually went to manufacturing. But there was a sea of prototypes that were rejected because this is what we are looking at. Old, not stable, crystallizing, orange and brown in nature, not something that we want to go to market with. And more. <laughs> and even this guy, right? No ideal. Thank you. <laughs>